Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. Today, I'm gonna to be doing the full review on the compressor styled watch by Bernie, model number AM7081. Now, this watch has been on sale for a while now, but previously to now, it has been branded under their first time logo. And I haven't really connected with that name. I'm not really a big fan of it. Now, I know a lot of people don't particularly like the Bernie name, However, after having my initial Bernie watch, my little simple dress watch, I really started to like Bernie and I really liked the name and I really liked the watches. And as soon as they rebranded this compressor style watch as Bernie, I just had to buy myself one. Now I bought this watch off AliExpress from the Bernie official store and I bought it whilst it was on sale and it was on sale for about 100 Australian dollars. Normally outside of the sales it sells for about 115 Australian dollars. If you are interested in this watch after watching this review I'll leave one of those affiliate links down below. I do appreciate your support by using my links. It really helps me to then be able to purchase more watches to bring for you on this channel. One of the other reasons I wanted to buy another Bernie watch was the customer service that I've received from Bernie. The feedback from them, the interaction with them, the quick responses and the very pleasant nature of them has been really impressive. Also this watch states that it has a 36 month warranty on it. Now I really hope that it has a 36 month warranty on it because I think that would be quite amazing for a watch on AliExpress to provide that sort of warranty. And I have to say, having looked at the Bernie brand and the Bernie watch company itself, it is quite a big company over in China, so it wouldn't surprise me if this warranty is actually provided on these watches. I chose to go with the yellow dial variant, but there's a couple of other options if you don't want the yellow one. And let's flip the camera around, let me show you those other options, and let me show you the full review of this Bernie compressor styled watch. So here we have the Bernie AM7081M, which is the yellow dial variant of this particular Bernie watch. It comes in this fairly simple packaging with an outer white sleeve. It comes with our Witness the Legend packaging, which is what we come to expect from Bernie now. We have a little hang tag. We have a little booklet. And then we have our watch on, again, the customary massively oversized velvet pillow from Bernie. So the first thing you notice when you pull it out of the packaging is how substantial this watch is and how sort of masculine it sort of feels with those sort of angles and with that sort of overall look and with the double crowns. But even though it does look and feel substantial, the sort of dimensions don't actually reflect it being that massive. And those dimensions being a 42 millimeter case diameter, it's 13.5 millimeters thick, which is a little bit thick, but it's not massive by any means at all. The lug to lug is 49.2 millimeters. The lug width is 20 millimeters. And on this supplied rubber strap, it comes in at 99 grams. And I have to say the dial is actually quite pretty and it's quite well laid out. I really like that it has this checkered pattern in the center. And then we have this sort of almost satin, slightly raised section for where the indices is attached to. We have Bernie and automatic printed on in black around the edge on this sort of rehort, which is obviously then moved by this crown here. We have printed on in white, this little white triangle that's inverted. We have white markers down to the 15, markers for the minutes all the way around in black, five through to 55 printed on the outside. Here we have a 12 and a six, and they are applied and they are a gloss or a polished silver being metal. There's no loom on the 12 or the 6, but then at the other hour markers, excluding where the date window is, we do have applied silver markers polished again, and those are loom filled. And the hands on this watch are really actually quite nice and very legible, very easy to, to read this one here. We have a arrow minute hand. It is polished silver with a syringe tip on the end. It is loom filled. And as you can see from just in there, there's a bit of a bend. So there's a little bit of a texture, a little bit of a 3D effect to this hand. Hand here. The hour hand's a little bit more simple, but it is also polished steel with a mini syringe tip and it's also loom filled. And then we have this nice contrasting red color, which I think contrasts really nicely on that yellow dial. It has a little bit of loom as well, and it has a nice long sort of syringe tip to it as well. Now, as I mentioned, there's no loom on the 12 or the 6, but there is loom on those indices 
on this inverted triangle and on the hands. So let's have a look at that loom now. And it's one of the most surprising parts about this watch, I think, especially at this affordable price, is initially you get that nice, strong glowing from the loom. It just continues to glow. And at this sort of affordable price, I'm really quite impressed with the loom quality at this price. Now, Bernie states that this is all covered by a piece of mineral crystal that is sapphire coated. Now, I don't know what this sapphire coating really means. I, I think it might just be a little bit of a gimmick because it certainly doesn't register as sapphire on my diamond select. And I think it really looks and it feels like a mineral crystal. Certainly doesn't feel like there's much AR coating, if any. However, even without any AR coating, it is very legible and very easy to read this dial, which is quite nice. Now, obviously, one of the features and one of the things about this watch is this dual crown. They really do sort of stand out and are a big part of the reason why you probably are looking at this watch. The top one, it, there is not screwed down and it moves this internal rotating bezel here. It's nice and easy to grab hold of that crown and obviously you can move it around nice and simply. Now, it's not a hugely smooth movement, but it's also not a clicky movement. So it's not clicking at every minute, but it's not just rotating really quickly and easily. It has this sort of in-between feel, which I think is actually quite good because you don't want it to be too easy to move, but you also don't want to be biting it either. So it's just a nice, nice movement, and it feels quite consistent, and it feels like you can't knock that, so you're not going to be moving that without meaning to. At the three o'clock, you are going to see this sort of the date window and day window. It's one of these ones which is divided up into the three parts. The idea behind that apparently is if you can't read the 21, maybe you're going to read the 22 or the 20 or whatever numbers are being displayed at that day. So you can get a sort of an understanding of what's going to be in the middle. I'm not really sure how well that actually works in reality when you go to read it. And I'm not really sure if it works particularly well when you're looking at it, but that's what it is. And this Bernie watch is powered by the Seagull ST1632. And obviously we can control those hands using this bottom crown here. It does have some interesting knurling on it and a very easy grip. It's very easy to grab onto this one. Now it is screw down and it does have hand winding and it also has hacking. But it is one of those sort of movements that when you push the crown back in again, you quite often get a little bit of a jump from the second hand. Now, I want to show you something about this movement which I'm not overly impressed with, and apparently it's quite well known for these Seagull ST1632 movements to have. So let's just wait for this movement to move around. So as soon as it passes the 12 o'clock, we're going to start seeing some slight erratic movement from that second hand. Let me just move it a bit closer for you. So it's not quite as consistent as we would like. It starts jumping around, it starts skipping, it starts doing some very, very strange stuff. Once it passes the six o'clock, it goes back to normal. And that sort of jumping and that skipping, it is a known issue for this Seagull movement. Um, however, it doesn't really affect the actual general use of the watch. It doesn't affect the timekeeping of the watch. So let's stick it on the time grapher and see actually how this movement is looking on the time grapher. So let's have a look at the figures here. It's vibrating at 21,600 vibrations per hour. That is a 0.1 beat error. That's very good, I'm very happy with that. The amplitude is 244. That's a very reasonable amount of time. But the rate is not fantastic, and it is deviating a little bit from about minus 14 through to about minus 25. So that's not absolutely ideal by any means. It's not absolutely horrendous either, and it actually is within the tolerances of this movement. But as you can see, it's not ideal. So how does the rest of the watch look? Well, I really like this solid bezel here, and I like how they've divided up with this internal line here. It makes it look quite interesting. It adds, adds a little bit more out of depth to it as well. On the sides, we have a vertical brushing along here, and I have to say it's not the best I've ever seen. I'll see if I can try and capture it, but you'll notice there is a bit of a weird line there, and it comes across to here. What it actually looks like is somebody has sort of smudged it here, but it's not actually a smudge. There's actually just an inconsistency with that brushing there, which is a little bit unfortunate. I do, however, like the case profile. I like how the sort of bezel sits beyond that case. And I do like this nice angles, and I do like the screws, how the bracelet or the, the band here is attached. On the other side, we are looking about the same, except for obviously we have the two crowns there. On the, on the back, we have a display case back showing off that seagull movement. And let's have a look at what we've got written here. What it says is that it's an automatic, the AM7081M, which is the model number. It's stainless steel, 20 atmospheres, and it also says that it has superior luminos, 
which as we've already seen, the loom on this watch is actually particularly good, especially at this sort of price point. The strap that it comes on, this rubber strap, is actually particularly nice as well. I'm not a huge rubber strap person, but if I am going to wear a watch on a rubber strap, it needs to be quite good. And this one, it has some really substantial feel to it, but it's very, very soft. It's a little bit thick along here, it gets thinner at the edge here, but because it's nice and soft, it's nice and gentle, oh, it feels very nice in hand. It fits and feels really nice on the wrist. However, these little keepers here, they, they're, they're obviously made of the same material, but they feel pretty cheap and quite often they sort of they are falling over the top of the hardware and that has done that to me a few times the hardware itself is this polished buckle um, that feels sort of okay but it's one of those ones where you can sort of move the tang around a lot and being polished it doesn't really then fit in with the uh, mostly brushed case either does it and how does it look on wrist? Well, on my six and three quarter inch wrist, I think it actually looks really quite good. It is a little bit different from anything else in my collection, and I really like the way it sits. And as I mentioned, this strap is so nice and comfortable and so soft, it really conforms very well to my wrist, and it's very, very comfortable on wrist. Looking down my arm, you can see it sits off just a little bit, but having that slightly downturned lugs does help for it to fit. Being an overall lug to lug of almost 50 millimeters does sound big, but it does seem to sort of work on my wrist size. I don't think I'd probably recommend this one for people with much smaller wrists than me, but I certainly like it. It's a fun watch to wear as well, and I do enjoy a watch always having a little bit of fun to it. So what do I like about it? What don't I like about it? And what would I change? Well, firstly, I always do appreciate a dual crown. I quite like the look of this. I like the features of it. And I like having that internal moving bezel. I think that's a, quite a, a nice sort of, it's not, I don't think it's a gimmick, but I, I just quite like it. I think it sort of looks good. I also really like the overall look of the dial. I like the different textures and the way it's all pulled together. It certainly has that sort of very 3D sort of textured feel to it. The angular lugs as well, I've already mentioned that, I quite like that. The rubber strap is particularly good as I've mentioned. I actually have to say that this is probably one of my favourite rubber straps that I've ever actually used, even better than much more expensive straps. Obviously the affordability of this one is a big thing and I think it is super affordable at that price. You can't complain about a watch at this price, especially when it's presenting as well as this one is, even with the few little issues. And the three year warranty that Bernie is claiming that they give us, well, that's quite considerable. That's a lot more than the many other more well-known watches give us. And I have to say, Bernie is quite a large company in China, and I don't think there's anything to say that we wouldn't get that three year warranty. So what am I not liking about it? Well, there's a few obvious things. That inconsistency with the second hand, well, that's, that's not great. Obviously, the movement itself is also not running perfectly, and that's not great either. But I have to say, in everyday wearing, when I'm actually wearing this one day to day, I'm not really noticing that loss of seconds. And also, when I'm looking down at the face, unless I'm concentrating heavily on it, I don't tend to notice the skipping the second hand too much. Those keepers, they're not very good. Um, they do work, but I don't love it. And that inconsistency of the brushing is not fantastic. But again, you really do have to sort of look closely to notice that just at a general glance or just looking down on your wrist. It's not something that is concerning or that's gonna worry you. So what would I change? Well. Mostly, I'd love to change that out for a better movement because I actually really quite like this watch. I like the look of it. I like the way it feels on wrist. I like the fun of it. But having that movement in there that's not performing as well as I would like, it'd be fantastic to have this with one with something a little bit more reliable. And the last thing, and probably the main sort of visual thing that I want to change, it'd be nice not to have the way they've done that date in the day. The day is even written quite small. I think this one will look particularly good if we just got rid of that completely. I know I do say that a bit, but I think it would certainly suit this dial more if we just had a loom indice there. So let's flip back to me now, and I'm gonna give you some of my final thoughts about this Bernie watch. So as you can see, it's a little bit of a shame that that movement isn't quite as good as I was hoping, but it is a pretty much a known issue with these watches. So be aware, if you do choose to buy one of these, this same issue may happen to you. Now, I did contact Bernie about this issue. I provided them a short video to show and outline the problem that I'm having with the watch, and they decided to give me a partial refund for it. And to be honest, I think the watch is perfectly fine at this sort of affordable price. With a partial refund, it made it even better. 
and that known problem that is with this movement doesn't actually affect the timekeeping of it. It just affects the look of the second hand as it moves around the dial. Now besides that one issue, realistically, I think this watch is actually really nice. I like the look of it, I like the size of it, I like how it wears on wrist, and it really is a bit of a fun watch to wear as well, because it's a little bit different to other watches that are in my collection. And I have to say, the Loom has really surprised me on this watch. At such an affordable price from an AliExpress watch, it really is good quality Loom, and it lasts quite a long time throughout the night. I've also had a quick look on the Bernie and Frisch's store on AliExpress at the reviews of other customers, and overwhelmingly, everybody has been very happy with their watch and given it five stars. So thank you very much for watching another one of my videos. I really do appreciate it. I hope to see you again in the next one.